Well, as you're uh, seated, it is such a it's such a privilege for Sharon and I to be here uh, this weekend, and so thankful for what God did last night, and and uh, for the opportunity to come, and and uh, we're just uh, every any just any time we get the privilege to be able to minister God's word, it, it is a privilege, and it, it doesn't matter, and it's humbling, and it doesn't matter. If it's ministering and, and no, matter, no matter what realm or no matter what venue it is, it doesn't matter if you're ministering to five or five thousand, it doesn't matter. It's always a privilege Amen. to lift up the name of Jesus. And why is that? Because we don't we don't deserve anything. How many say amen to that? Amen. We don't deserve anything but hellfire. I know that's strong, but we don't deserve anything but hellfire because all of us are sinners. But I thank the Lord that Jesus took our sin at Calvary 2,000 years ago to save us from an eternal hell and give us eternal heaven in this place. Praise God. We're thankful for Pastor Matt and Sister Danielle for just the invitation to come. And uh, the one thing I can say about your pastor is just, he's just so real. That's what I love about Pastor Matt. Just so real and genuine. And I absolutely love that. And Sharon and I, we love that about him and, and uh, Sister Danielle. We just, so Pastor Man, I honor you and I esteem you highly in the name of the Lord. And uh, if you're a visitor, happen to be a visitor this morning and you don't, uh, you live within reasonable driving distance, which is anywhere between eight to ten hours, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, uh, and you need a good church. I, I encourage you to be a part of it. And if you're already a member here, I encourage you to be more plugged in to what God's doing here. Pray for your pastor and his wife. Pray for, uh, pray for them that God would expand this work. That souls would be saved. Amen. Uh, and that's been on. That's been on my heart. I know it's been on many heart for uh, some time now. But the way and Pastor, pastor Matt were, and I were talking about it last night. The way to the Bible says evangelism, evangelism take place is really not by church people hopping from church to church. That happens, and, and sometimes that can be a benefit, but you know what? That's really not God's way that we see in the book of Acts. What we see in the book of Acts is God's people being filled with the power of the Holy Spirit and being moved with compassion, the heart of Jesus, to go out and to tell other people about Jesus. That's God's way of evangelism. And today, this morning, I'm preaching myself. If you don't feel that, if we, if we, if we don't feel that in our heart, we ought to let that be our prayer. Lord, set a fire down in my soul. Yes. If you need to, make me, convict me, make me uncomfortable, do whatever you got to do, knock me on the floor. Lord, just use me. Just use me, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I know I'm preaching before I'm preaching, but uh, I'm thankful that we're thankful to be here. Thankful that Samuel and the group were able to come uh, last night. And I'll just let Pastor Matt know this publicly, but they, they love coming here. They really do. And uh, they love coming because there's a freedom here. And, um, and, and plus you bless them as well. That's a, for a college student, I tell you, that's a, that's a huge thing right there. So if you have your Bibles today, I'd like you to turn, if you would please, to Mark chapter 10. The Gospel of Mark chapter 10. I know it will be, will be put on the screen in just a moment, but Mark chapter 10 beginning with verse 46 and uh, reading through verse 52. <laughs> And this is a passage of scripture that's been on my heart quite a lot recently. And uh, uh, I, I've known this passage. This is one of those passages of scripture. It deals with the healing of blind Bartimaeus. And I, it's one of those stories that I heard when I was a little boy in Sunday school. And sometimes we as adults, we read stories like this and we think, well, that's a nice, you know, little story. For, for, for the little kids. But you know what? That's not the case. Anytime we hear or we read in the Bible something like this, for example, Jesus healing blind Bartimaeus, or it could be another great event in the Bible, another great miracle, Israel crossing the Red Sea on dry ground. 
and then and then and, and then following them the Egyptians came and all of a sudden the waters returned and drowned Israel's enemies. Yeah. That was a miracle. But what those what those miracles do that we read in the Bible, they give us a template. They give us a template for God. Uh, they give us an example of God. It's not some nice little story like Winnie the Pooh or something. Amen. Hello? Amen. It's not something like, you know, the Wizard of Oz or something like that. We're just reading and, oh, wow, that's, that's really cool that, the, you know, that might that happen. That's, that's kind of, you know, nice little, you know, nice little story. No, it's not that at all. It's something that gives us a template about the character of God and also a temple of, of what God can do in any generation because the last I read Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and what? Forever. That means he's still, he's still parting Red Seas. They not be, may not be a physical Red Sea. It may be a financial Red Sea. But he's still parting them. Come on, somebody. It may be a sickness in your body, but he's still performing miracles. He's still doing the impossible. And I'm thankful this morning that you and I serve the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There's nobody like Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This morning, you and I don't have another religion like Buddhism or Shintoism or, or Mormonism or, or, or Roman Catholicism. No, what you and I have this morning is the only way to God. Yes. Come on, somebody. And that's Jesus. This is better than a football game we're talking about. This is better than anything. We're talking about our salvation. We're talking about eternity with God versus an eternity in hell. I'd much rather go to heaven. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I'd much rather go to heaven. And that belief system that, oh, we just, everybody just dies and just ends up in the grave and that, that's it. No, that's not what the Bible says. That's not reality. Reality is, is there's an eternal soul. Everybody is an eternal spirit. They're going to end up somewhere in heaven or hell one day. And so what we do on this earth determines where we're going to live for an eternity. Yes. Right there, just that statement lets us know it's worth it to live for Jesus now. In this little time that we have right now here on earth. It's worth it to live for Jesus. It's worth it to go all the way. Well, they'll talk about me. They'll make fun of me. I, I won't have time for, you know, the fun stuff in life. That's a lie from the pit of hell. James said our life is but a vapor. Get that. Our life is but a vapor. We're born. We eventually die or the rapture takes place. I hope the rapture takes place. Amen. I hope it takes place today. Amen. <laughs> well, that'd be an awesome heavenly homecoming. Yes. Well, here's our life. We're born. We die. The rapture takes place. And we have this. We we think of it as this long time between birth and death. But what the Bible says is that between birth and death is but a vapor in comparison to eternity. And how long does a vapor last? It's here one moment and it's gone the next. That's our life. So give God. Your love. Give God. I'm preaching to myself again. Give God everything. Give Jesus everything. And the little vapor of a life that we have is worth it. It's worth it. Praise God. Uh, Mark chapter 10, beginning verse 46. If you're there this morning, say amen. amen. And every one of you should say amen because it's on the screen. <laughs> In the Bible reading there, it says, And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he read, heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. It's a nice King James way of saying, keep your mouth shut. Right. But he cried out the more a great deal. That's a nice way of saying he made a big deal out of it. Amen. 
Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise, he calls for you. And he casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, What will you that I should do unto thee? What will, it, what, what will thou that I should do unto thee? And the blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go your way, your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way. Notice what he said at the very end in verse 52. And I'm going to begin at the end and then go back to the beginning and then come back to the end. But Jesus, he said to blind Bartimaeus, he said, your, go your way, your faith has made you whole. Let me ask you something. Who made, G, who, or, or who made blind Bartimaeus whole? I ask who? Jesus. Jesus did. But Jesus said, go your way, your faith has made you whole. And this morning I want to talk about faith. And I want to talk about what faith in Jesus does. So it's a title for this little message this morning. I'll just entitle it, What Faith Does. Would you pray with me today? Father, we come before you today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we're just so thankful for your presence. And I ask you, Lord, for the anointing of your Holy Spirit to come here and move in our midst. So I pray that, Lord, you would quicken me, spirit, soul, and body, and give me clarity of thought and speech, and that, Lord, your anointing would rest upon me to minister. But, Lord, I ask for your anointing to rest upon all of us here today to receive your word, the word that you have for us. And I pray that, Lord, it would be like an arrow that just, Lord, sticks in our heart and brings healing, but brings conviction, brings encouragement, brings strength, brings whatever it needs to bring. Lord, let your word go forth and touch us pierce our hearts today and I pray that God you would touch our minds and let's not be distracted with anything else except just your word let our minds be fixed upon your word today and I ask you to move in the altar call Lord we ask it all in Jesus name and everyone said amen, amen. and amen as I said earlier the story the story this passage of blind Bar uh, Bartimaeus has been in my in my spirit quite a lot recently. It's just one I've, I've known since I was just a young boy. Uh, but it's awesome how what the Lord can do is He can take us something that you've known, that we've known for years in God's Word. And, and He can, and one fine day we can read it or maybe the Holy Spirit will put it upon your heart and you read it afresh in God's Word. And it will be, it will be like you never heard it in your life. In other words, God will make something old that you've known for years and He'll make it fresh manna. He'll turn it into fresh manna for you and I. That's what the Holy Spirit does. That's what I believe the Holy Spirit is doing in reference to the cross and Jesus' victory at the cross. There's so many believers that view it as, oh, I already know that. We already know that. But oh, when the Holy Spirit begins to move upon that believer's heart, Musa, I know all of us, we can give our own testimony here today. It's like you get saved all over again. Amen. You feel like it. You really didn't, but you really what you experience for the renewal of your mind. And you realize it's not my work, it's His work. Yes. Hallelujah. And that burn, that weight of your own sanctification, that burn, that weight of you yearning or, or, or achieving victory over sin is taken off your shoulders and is laid at the foot of the cross. Oh, what a joy that brings. And only the Holy Spirit can do that. And, only the, and the same thing can happen even in a passage like this can take something like this, a story of blind Bartimaeus, and make it so fresh, make it so real. I know that's what he's done with me recently as I have found myself time and time again crying out unto the Lord in my own time of prayer when blind Bartimaeus cried out, Jesus, have mercy on me. 
I found myself so many times recently saying that to the Lord. Lord, I need your mercy today. Lord, I need your help. I need mercy. I can't earn it. I can't deserve it. I can't pray or fast enough for it. I can't preach enough for it. I just need something. I need you, Lord. I need your goodness. Have mercy on me. I'm not good enough. So, Lord, pour out your goodness on me. That's the kind of God that we serve. We're bad, but he's good. I'm talking about in and of ourselves. We're bad, but he's good. Come on, somebody. We're bad, but he's good. And this is how good he is. We don't deserve it, but he wants to pour out his goodness on us. I said he wants to pour out his goodness on us. He is more good than our human minds can imagine. And in this story of blind Bartimaeus, one of the things that it, as I, as, you know, I, I, the, as I, I said, the title of the message is what faith does. But it's really, I, I, I want to talk about briefly for a moment, and it's all connected about what, what Jesus does. Because when I talk about what faith does, I'm talking about what faith in Jesus, what faith in what he did for us at Calvary, what faith does in our heart. But first of all, we have to settle, and we get it, have to settle our mind on what Jesus does. And one of the things that we read about in this passage, we see, is that not only does he heal, if that was the only thing that we got from this passage that, you know, Jesus heals, it would be wonderful, but there's so much more that we can see from this event than, the, than just Jesus heals. And I'm not making light of that, but there's so much more. What we see in this passage is this, is that Jesus changes the whole direction of a person's life. Yes. He changes the direction of a, whole, of a person's life completely. Why do I say that? It's because this was a beggar. He was blind. And we don't know how long he was in this condition, but most likely he was in that condition for quite some time. But get this, when Jesus healed him, we read about it in verse, in verse 52, immediately he was received his sight and he followed Jesus in the way. From what we know about church historians and early church fathers, we know this about blind Bartimaeus, that blind Bartimaeus, no longer blind, no longer a beggar. He followed Jesus the rest of his life as a seeing person and was no longer a beggar anymore. Gee, I tell you, Jesus changes directions of the direction of a person's life. Just think about your own life. Think about where you would be right now if it wasn't for Jesus. Also, think about where you would be right now if it wasn't for Jesus. You wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be in church. We'd be somewhere, but we wouldn't be here worshiping, lifting our hands, our, our, our holy hands, lifting up Jesus and believing and trusting in Jesus. We wouldn't be here. And especially, we wouldn't be on our way to heaven. We'd be on our way to hell. But thank God Jesus changes the whole direction of a person's life completely. Amen. And one of the greatest lies of the enemy to you and I as children of God is that he will try to get us so focused on what we don't have. He'll get us, as my wife ministered last night, he'll distract us. Oh, the master, the Satan is a master of distraction. Yes. You're saved. You're born again. Maybe you've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. You love God, but you're, we're so consumed with what we don't have or, what, or, the, or, the, or other things, material things or internal things. Oh, I'm just, I got this problem. I can just sit in my life and it just won't go away or I'm stubborn or I'm, I'm this or, you know, and, 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 and the devil, oh, he will chirp in your ear. Yes. Amen. And you're saved. And you even know the message of the cross for sanctification. But I hear me this morning. You, even, even, that, even that believer can live a, a life that's just so frustrated and so miserable. Because you're so focused 
on the other things. You're so focused on self. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you something I didn't read in a book. I'm telling you something. I've lived this. Amen. And I have to battle with this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against those spiritual powers in high places. There's a wrestling that takes place, that takes a, a fight of faith that takes place in our life. Yes. And these voices of distraction, oh, you need this, and look at that in your life. Or, man, if you really believed in the cross, you wouldn't have that. Come on. Yeah. Anybody experienced that before? Amen. If you really believed in the cross, oh, you wouldn't have that. That sin or that impatience or that whatever, whatever it may be. You wouldn't have that. Or if you really love God, you wouldn't do such and such. Come on. Or you just, well, you, you don't love God like you ought to. And yeah, that's true for all of us. But what the enemy will do is he'll take a truth and he'll pervert it and turn it into a lie. Yes. He'll pervert it and turn it into a lie and get our, for, for this purpose, to get our focus on us, me, myself. So we won't, when we wake up in the morning, we go to, even when we go to God in prayer, we're fixed on us rather than on Him, upon His finished work. Yes, Hallelujah. I'm imperfect, but you know what? I'm, that's not my focus. I know that, but that's not my focus. My focus is that he's perfect and he's given me his perfection. Yes, he's given me his righteousness. Amen. He's given me his holiness. Hear me this morning. Jesus in you is your righteousness. Hallelujah. Jesus in you is your holiness. Jesus in you is your perfection. Yes. Yes. Not us. That's right. Give the Lord a hand clap. Right. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy of it. And, so, and, and this story again tells us that Jesus changes. Yeah. You know, Mark, we, we are us living over about two thousand years later. We we miss some things sometimes. And uh, Mark, when he wrote this, he was very specific to call out Bartimaeus and and say that he was blind Bartimaeus. But he was also the son of Timaeus. Again, he made it very, that particular. Those type of things, sometimes we, we just kind of read right over them and, and lose sight of those things. But Mark wrote that for a reason. And the reason why is because we don't, we don't, even though Mark doesn't give us any background on who Timaeus is, actually we have no idea. Except he was the father of Bart Timaeus. Bar means son. Bar, son of Timaeus. But we do know this. That the word Timaeus, the name Timaeus, means this. It means highly favored one. <coughs> Timaeus means one who is prized in society, among people. And we don't know this. Get this. We don't know who he was. But we know this, that in Bible times, in those times... What a person's name meant means a whole lot more than what names mean today. <laughs> That's right. Like I had a good friend years ago. He's still a good friend. I still consider him a good friend up in Ohio. And his name is Dwayne. And he's white. <laughs> and he was, we were talking one day about, I don't know how we got in the conversation about what names mean. And I was telling him, my name means, is Robert. That's my legal name. And it means, uh, whatever, it, it means, uh, Illuminated one. Can you imagine? <laughs> imagine that. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> okay. Thank the Lord for that. Yeah. <laughs> and Dwayne, D U A N E. Again, he's white. He said, "You know, you know what my Dwayne means? Dwayne means the dark one." <laughs> <laughs> we both got a good laugh out of that one. Because <laughs> he was white as white could be, okay? <laughs> but we, but yeah, my point is, in today's world, our names don't really mean anything. Yes. The meaning of them. You know, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they do, but sometimes, but in Bible days, they meant a lot. And they said a lot about a person's character, about their background, about who they were. And get this, Timaeus, his name meant highly favored one. So get this, Bartimaeus' lineage was one of favor. 
one of prestige, one in which people in society looked up to. That was his lineage. But that wasn't his condition. His condition was he was a beggar and he was blind. And he was probably most likely disconnected from his family. In those days, if somebody was blind or a beggar, his family wanted nothing to do with them. And here he was disconnected from his family, disconnected from favor, disconnected from honor, disconnected even from being viewed in society as anything of value at all. But I'm so thankful that that, that may be the way people look. But God sees another way. Jesus, when he saw blind Bartimaeus, Jesus loved blind Bartimaeus. Amen. In society, he may have been one who was full of dishonor and had no value at all. But Jesus, when he looked at Bartimaeus, he saw him one as one with value. Hallelujah. And he sees you the same way this morning. He sees you as one with value. So valuable that he would die on the cross. He would give up his own life for you. Thank you, Lord. It's not, and that's just not some good preaching point. That's the truth. Yeah. If you were the only one on this earth, he would he value you so much, he would have given up his life just for you. Like I heard one man say that, I think it's very true. You and I are not worthy, but we were worth it. Yes. Yeah. I said we're not worthy, but in the eyes of God, we were worth it. I said who we were. You, you this morning, take it personally. You are highly valued in the eyes of God. So much so that God would send his best, his only son, to shed his blood just for you. Amen. Oh, don't let the enemy lie to you and say, oh, you're nothing. You're this or that. You might as well just walk away from God. Oh, don't go to church no more. You don't have what it takes. That's a lie. That's right. Amen. That's a lie. You are highly favored in the eyes of God. You are blessed Amen. and honored all through the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All through the blood of Jesus. We learn from this that Jesus changes the direction of people's lives. And when God healed, when Jesus healed by Bartimaeus, get this, all that honor. We don't know, uh, we do know this, that he became a follower of Jesus the rest of his life. And you know, we don't know all the other details of it, but we do know this, that spiritually, that God gave him his honor back. Hallelujah. Spiritually speaking, and even most likely physically, God gave him, because he was no longer a beggar anymore. That's right. And he was no longer blind. God gave him his honor back. God gave him his prestige back. And I tell you, that's what God will do. Yeah. What the enemy has stolen, Jesus will give it back to us. Yeah. Yeah. I said what the enemy has stolen, Hallelujah. Jesus will give it back Hallelujah. to us. And you and I as a child of God just need to stand our ground based by our faith on the blood of Christ and say, devil, that's mine. God gave it to me. Thank you, Lord. God gave me peace. It's mine. I claim it. I rest in it. Hallelujah. God gave me victory through the blood. It's mine. Oh, yes, I got some problems. Oh, but I'm victorious by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And that applies to everything. If you need joy back, then take it back today. Yes. Some of you need your praise back. Some of you, need, some of you might need your, your joy back. Some of you might need us. Sharon ministered several weeks ago at Family Worship Center. Some of you might need your hallelujah back. Amen. Oh, I'll, I'll share it because I'll share a testimony. We were preaching. Uh, I don't remember where it was, but we were preaching uh, in another, another city somewhere. It might have been in Texas. I'm not sure. But uh, and she had preached that evening, and in the course of her message, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> all preachers, have done the same things. We we all have our little quirks, and and we we are, we are preachers. We are the most critical of ourselves. And uh, and she thought, and she we were in the car, 
And she said these words to me. She said a word this to that. She said, you know what? I, I said hallelujah too much. <laughs> You're talking about <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. <laughs> Turn to Mark, hallelujah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Chapter 10, hallelujah. Okay. <laughs> we, do we do that sometimes. Or praise the Lord. We do that. Praise the Lord, you know. It's a good morning. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. All right. <laughs> well, she said, Oh, I said hallelujah too much. And about, it was, I don't know, maybe a minute later, she said, but at least I have a hug. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's good. And she said, the Lord spoke to me and told me, at least I have a hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. And, and I tell you what, you and I, we, you, we, we, the, the enemy will pick on us on those type of things. Just something as simple as that. Oh, you said hallelujah too much. Her own flesh will do it. You said hallelujah too much. But thank God, God whispered in her ear and said, at least you have a hallelujah. Yes. That's a good word. She ministered several weeks ago at Family Worship Center and told that story and told those at Family Worship Center. So some of you need to get your hallelujah back. You've lost your hallelujah. Amen. But this morning in the story of Blind Bartimaeus, we read that God will give you back what you've lost. Hallelujah. Are you thankful for that? Yes. Come on. Our God will give you back what you've lost through sin or through our own wanderings. God will give it back to you. But I want to, real quickly, before we end today, I want, I want to focus on four things that we see faith does in this passage because as I said, at the very end of this passage, <clears throat> Jesus said to blind Bartimaeus, your faith has made you whole. Now the word of faith movement for the last 30, 40 years has emphasized faith, but in the wrong way. Has emphasized passages like this and will focus on it and say, look, at see right there? Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. But they've changed it and, and they preach really a message of you put your faith in your faith. Come on. Yeah. Put your faith in your confession yeah. and do it three times. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I heard, like I heard one minister, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a, uh, a casino machine. What well, jack, whatever they call that, jackpot, whatever. Uh, just up one, two, three. I already heard it. He said, do it three. Everybody, do it one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. And he said, wait, the Lord told me. This is what he said. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. I want all of you to do it. Reach up your hand and do it. One, two, three. And he said, on the third time, he said, he said, Oh, look, at, you're getting your blessing back. You're getting your money back. You're getting cars back. You're getting house, houses back. And the place erupted. Of course. Because it was appealing to the flesh. Yeah. But hear me, our faith, I just said that not to be critical or pessimistic or anything. I'm just being real. But so many times in the church world today, fed people... And especially the word of faith, they put their faith in their faith. That's right. Right, yeah. Or put their faith in their confession. Yeah. Or if you were legalism, like I was, we put our faith in our works. Right. Right, yeah. We put our faith in our doing. But it's not faith in us. It's faith in Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And it's faith also as well, specifically with the correct option to faith. Faith in what Jesus accomplished at the cross yeah. through his death. Amen. And I can tell you in one word what he accomplished. Everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said everything that you and I need, Jesus did it through his death. When he said those words, it is finished. Amen. Three English words, one Greek word, tetelestai. It means the debt has been Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The debt has been paid. Your debt has been paid. 
It also meant the law has been fulfilled. Everything that God required of you, but you couldn't do it. Jesus, in your place, did it for you. Amen. And did it perfectly. And he said, it's done. It's finished. Hallelujah. Yeah. That wasn't a statement of defeat. It was a statement of victory. Yes. Oh, it's finished. Oh, and it was at that moment, I believe, that figuratively, that Jesus put his head or his foot on Satan's head. Yes. And according to Genesis 3.15, he crushed Satan's Hallelujah. head. Hallelujah. He crushed Satan's authority. As Jesus prophesied to the serpent in Genesis 3.15, that the seed of the woman, it was Jesus. Serpent, Satan, you'll crush his heel, but he will crush your head. I would much rather have my heel crushed than my head crushed. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Because you can survive a hurt ankle, but you cannot survive a crushed head. That's right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And the devil is defeated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Said the dad, that deserves a drink. <laughs> One of the things that we see here in this passage is this. is that real faith in Jesus. Real faith in what he did for us at Calvary. Just four quick points. Number one, it will cause us to cry out to Jesus in prayer. Because what, again, Jesus said at the very end, he didn't just say, I make you whole. Go. Now, Jesus did that many times. Jesus sometimes healed people with just a word. Sometimes it was with a touch. Or sometimes it was through his disciples. As they would go out and preach. But this time, Jesus said, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. So we see that in this passage, faith. Is, is, is very central in this passage. And I want to tell, I want to just for a moment real briefly talk about faith. Because faith, we... Faith is a word that, that, that I've learned this in teaching and in ministry. You know, where, where our human minds, we hear a word so often and sometimes the word spoken so often or a word spoken so often, we can lose the meaning of it. Right. And faith is one of those words. You know what real faith is? Let me use a synonym for it. The word faith, the synonym for the word faith, biblical faith, is the word dependence. Real faith is dependent faith. You know what dependence means? If you someone say, well, so-and-so is dependent, it means that they cannot operate. They cannot live without whatever that thing is. That's right. And yet this real faith is dependent upon Jesus, dependent upon what he did at Calvary, dependent upon the word, dependent upon the power of the Holy Spirit, Amen. dependent upon all that. And all of that comes through Jesus. Yes. We're dependent. It means we are faith. We can't live. Lord, I can't, I can't make it today without you. But real faith in Jesus, real faith in what he did at the cross will cause us to cry out to Jesus in prayer. Because what did blind Bartimaeus do when he heard that Jesus was passing by? He cried out, a beggar. And that's a picture of you and I, spiritually, without Jesus. That's what you and I are. We're beggars. We're blind beggars. We cannot see. That's right. We have nothing. We can't help ourselves. But that blind, Bartimaeus, that blind beggar Bartimaeus, when he heard Jesus of Nazareth was walking by, he cried out with a great voice, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Yes. And real faith in Jesus for you and I in 2018 will cause us to do the same thing. It doesn't matter how articulate you are or how non-articulate you are. I tell you, it doesn't take a degree to say, Jesus, have mercy on us. Yes, Hello? 
It doesn't take a six-figure salary to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Come on, somebody. I'm talking to real people. It doesn't take this a boat or two houses to say, Jesus, have mercy on me. Yes, Lord. And what is mercy, mercy, and grace? They're twin brothers. It's God's goodness given to undeserving people. And God's mercy, it manifests itself in so many different ways. His wisdom is His mercy. His power is His mercy. His victory is His mercy. Even the, even the non-spiritual things that we might think of. The wisdom that you need in the workplace. That's His mercy. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. That co-worker that is causing you to lose your sanctification and lose your testimony. And causing you to be a reproach, really. Causing us to be a reproach on the name of Jesus. Right. That person says he's a Christian. Or she, but she's acting like it, just like we are. I just heard her cuss. Get this, his mercy will cause us to will pour into us, give us what we don't deserve. And yet with our faith anchored in what he did at Calvary, he'll give you, he'll give you the mercy. The next time they press your button, out comes love and not hate. That's good. Hello? Amen. Next time they cross your path, out comes peace and calmness. The carriage of Jesus. I'm not talking about becoming a rug for people, but I'm talking about fortitude in your spirit. Amen. Because this, get this, it doesn't take, it doesn't take somebody who's really strong. It doesn't take a great person to get in the flesh. Come on. Anybody can get in the flesh. That's right. But it takes a man or a woman of God to say, no, nope, I ain't going there. Yeah. No, I thank the Lord. That's not the person Jesus made me. That hatred, that attitude, that, that, that whatever has been crucified with Jesus. Amen. And real faith will cause us to cry out to Jesus in prayer. The second thing that real faith will do is that real faith will, will not let others stop us Amen. from crying out to Jesus. So that again, real faith will cause us to not let other people call, uh, for us cry out to Jesus or us following the will of God. When they cried out, and I'm, 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 I'm skipping over some things for the second time, but when he cried out, again, he didn't whisper it. There was a great crowd there. There was possibly thousands of people there. When you have thousands of people, you can't just say, hey, Jesus, have son of, you know, have mercy on me. No, you've got to shout it. But it says that when they shouted, it, they commanded and there was a group of people, we don't know how many, but they came to blind Bartimaeus and said in verse 48, it says, and many, many, we don't know how many is, but many is many. <laughs> Charged him, it says in the, in the, uh, of the King James. It means they commanded him. They told him, and again, a nice way, the King James makes it nice there, but they told him, Blind Bartimaeus, keep your mouth shut. You're a beggar. You're blind. You're not even worthy to open your mouth in the midst of a multitude. How dare you make a scene? But you know what? Faith. Faith in Jesus. In blind Bartimaeus' heart. You know what it did? It caused him, it caused their command to go in one ear and out the other. Hallelujah. <laughs> I hear what you're saying, but I ain't going by it. What I know is this. My healer is walking by. Thank you. And I ain't going to miss my healing. I am not going to miss my opportunity for to be healed. And you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he made a great deal out of it. And he said it, he most likely even said it and cried it out even louder. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I encourage you today, don't let family, don't let friends, 
Don't let co-workers, don't let anybody stop you from praising him. Don't let anybody stop you from following God's will. Don't let anybody stop you from crying out to him. In this life, and all this is a message all in and of itself, but in this life, and I say church life, church family, it's one of the things about, I, 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 I love the local church. I, 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 I believe in the local church. I'm thankful for a media ministry, in which all ministries today, they have media, media, media ministries, and there are more people staying home on Sunday mornings, I think, than ever before because of that. But I'm thankful that the media ministry, it touches people that, cannot, that are not able to come. And I'm thankful for that. But some people, I've noticed this, some people stay away because they don't want to rub shoulders with other people. Hello? Come on. They don't want to let all, but you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. Amen. Now I've learned this in my Christian life and in the Bible, that this God uses other people, other believers in church in the sanctification process in our life. Right. Oh, there'll be some believers that rub you the wrong way. There'll be some believers that you absolutely bond to and you love and you're just like, you're just closer to them than your family. But you'll come across some believers that will give you, that will discourage you and will be just their presence. Satan will use it. Just their, just be in the same building. Satan will chirp in your ear. And you'll get all distracted. And you'll lose your praise. You'll lose your focus altogether. But I encourage you today. Don't let others stop you. Real faith in Christ will not let, will not stop you. Thirdly, what Jesus, what real faith does is real faith causes Jesus to stand still. We see this passage that it says he cried out the more a great deal. In verse 49, the Bible says, and Jesus stood still. What I want to say is this, is that when you and I cry in faith, I don't, cry in faith, cry to the Lord in faith, it, get, it gets his attention. It gets his attention. Sometimes we feel in this Christian life, we can feel this way. We can feel this way in our prayer life, but also in praise and just in everyday living. We can feel, as the white minister last night, we can feel as if we're all alone. We can feel as if our prayers are bouncing off the ceiling. Hello? We can feel as if we can feel that way, like there's nothing going on. But I want to encourage you today that when you cry out in faith, and I'm not talking about some super Christian faith. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about simple childlike faith. When you cry out in desperation, it causes him, it gets his attention. And it gets, I said, it gets his attention. And he is moving on your behalf even when you don't see it. I said, even when you don't see it, many times you don't see what God's doing until after the trial's over. And you look back and you're like, wow, look what God was doing. The whole time you were in desperation and you thought your prayers were bouncing off the ceiling, God was hearing you and God was doing the work behind the scenes. Oh, real faith causes Jesus to stand still. And last of all, last point I want to bring out here about real faith is that real faith in Jesus lets go of the old and embraces the new. It lets go of the old and embraces the new. Where do we get that out of this passage? Well, it's one of those things, again, that for us today, we just kind of skim right on by it and we don't realize the significance of it. The Bible says this, that when Jesus stood still, he sent a messenger to Bartimaeus. And that message, the messenger said to Bartimaeus, be of good comfort, rise, he calls for you. And in verse 51, in verse 50, you know what Blind Bartimaeus did? And what's interesting is, all of us was just a short little message, be of good comfort, rise, 
He calls for you. Amen. He didn't know, get this in the natural. It wasn't, it wasn't a message that clearly said, rise. Jesus said he's going to heal you today. That's right. It just said, Rob, be of good comfort, rise. He calls for you. Or maybe he wants to wow. He wants to talk to me. That'd be great. But you know what? Blind Bartimaeus didn't take it that way. The way Blind Bartimaeus took it was this way. And it would get this. It was faith in him, in Jesus, as the healer that caused him to cast off his garment. Amen. Threw that beggar's garment aside and rose and went to Jesus. Lord. What was so significant about that was the, the, the significance is this. The Roman world in that day, they didn't do this to everybody, but they did this to many beggars. People whom the Roman government felt that they were legitimate beggars. They were legitimate beggars that would give them a beggar's garment. And that, garbage, uh, that beggar's garment was designed in such a way or colored in such a way that people knew that they were a legitimate beggar. And get this, the Roman government approved of you giving them money. Now that was huge because the Roman government, they were tightwads on money. Hello, almost like our government. They want money, for, they, anything you got, they want money. They want some of it. Hello? Yes, yes, yes. And the Roman government, get this, for the Roman government to give him a beggar's garment was a sign that he was truly, legitimately a beggar and you could give him that, you could give him money. But get this, you know what that meant? You know what that meant for his garment? That garment was his income. <laughs> that garment was his identity. I am a legitimate beggar. Maybe, uh, we don't know this for sure, but maybe he even took pride in that. Maybe by what I may have said, you know what, I have some friends that don't even have one of these, but I do. I've got a legit, bona fide, Roman beggar's garment. <laughs> that was his income. That was his identity. But when Jesus called for him, he said, this identity is long gone. And I'm taking it off. And I'm, I'm, I'm about to get healed, so I won't need that anymore. Real faith, it lets go of the old and embraces the new. Real faith, embrace, lets go of the old man, ladies, the old woman. Let's go of everything that's not in Christ. Let's go of it. Lays it aside. The Bible over and over again in the New Testament we use that terminology lay aside, lay it aside lay it aside. If you've got sin in your life, lay it aside. Lay aside every every sin that besets thee. Just lay it aside. Just like and how can we lay it aside? Just like blind Bartimaeus did by faith. He's about to heal me. But there's a difference for you and I. You and I can let go of the old based on what's already been done. Amen. He's already accomplished my healing. I'm going to let go of the attitude. I'm going to let go of that victim mentality. Hello? Amen. I'm going to let go of it. I'm going to let go of the attitude of all oh, poor little me. I'll never be the Christian God wants. I'm going to let go of it. No! He has made me more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, nobody knows my name. I'm going to let go of that. Yeah. Because that doesn't matter. Like the song says, he knows my name. Amen. And that's what matters. And I'm going to embrace that. Amen. Well, they don't love me. I'm going to let go of that. And I'm going to embrace he loves Hallelujah. me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Amen. I'm going to let go of the old. And I'm going to embrace Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And everything he's made me in Christ. Yes. I'm going to embrace it. Get this. We can do that every day of our life. Let go of the old. 
embrace the new. And blind Bartimaeus got healed that day, and he became a follower of Christ the rest of his life. He never needed that garment. We don't know whatever happened to that garment, but what we can tell, he just left it. <laughs> Amen. Maybe some other beggar picked it up and claimed it. I don't know. More. <laughs> but he left it. And he became a healed Bartimaeus. Yes. A follower of Jesus. Yes. And God restored honor and, and prestige and victory and wholeness back to his life. You can come back. This singer, this singer can come back. Thank you, Lord. Can you all stand to your feet this morning? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful today that real faith in Christ, real faith in Christ will cause us to let go of the old and embrace the new. Let go of that old mindset. You know, one of the greatest things in life, I found this true in my own life, is that one of the greatest things in our own walk with the Lord is sometimes identifying, identifying in our own mind, in our own thinking, identifying what's a lie, what's of God, and what's not of God. Sometimes we just need discernment and to realize, you know what, that thinking is not of the Lord. It's not in Christ Jesus. So if it's not in Christ Jesus, it's a lie. And I'm just going to let go of it by faith. And I'm going to embrace what the Bible says yes. about who I am in Christ. Yes. Who He has made me. A divine exchange. Thank you, Jesus. He took my sin. He's made me righteous. Yes, Lord. He took my hatred. He took, he took bitterness. He took bad attitudes. He took it all. He gave me wholeness. He gave me love. He gave me forgiveness. He gave it all to me. And I'm going to walk a life that trusts in Him. The just shall live by faith. Praise the Lord.